Okay. So the meeting is called call to order at 6, 17 p.m. We'll do a roll call vote because our attendance, um, an order of alphabet, Bob. Connecting to audio. Hi, Bob, how are you? Are you present? I'm, I am. Chris? Yes. Uh, Chris Berglund present. Chris Rucho Marcia. present. Mosh is present. Mark? Present. Chris Rucho? Yeah. Yeah. Pat Halpin, and um, we'll wait for uh, Anna Mary, should be joining us. She said she was ready. Okay. Um, the first on the agenda is the re approval, review and approval of um, the minutes of January 6th. Where are we on that, Bob? Oh, well, actually, it's January 9th. I yeah. sent yeah. You and, sent them to us. And January 31st, I sent out two sets. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Did. both of those. So it was crazy nine and crazy ten or something. You did but, a great uh, job. It's really hard to pull it off, I'll tell you. Um, so let's figure this out. Uh, for the January 9th minutes, are there any additions or deletions or corrections? The the only, I'll make a motion. The only uh, cor correction, Bob, is on uh, Elise Wellington. Uh, I think it's the third to last paragraph or something. Her last name, her, her first name is spelled E-L-I-S-E. -E. I think that's a big deal. What, what, what is it again? E-L-I-S-E. -E. S E U F Z E. I mean, I don't know that that matters, but I don't know how closely. I mean, I know I know Elise, and she might she be reads reading them very closely. She'll read it. Yeah. Okay, I'll 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 correct that. No problem. Now the the interesting. Thing I'll is, second it. Second all, the motion. All in favor? Signal Chris Berglund, I. Mark Reed, I. Masha Khan, I. Pat Halp and I. Chris Rucho, I. All right. Um, my next question um, is a, a correction in pronunciation. Um, Elisa is Danish, and so you pronounce the E as an A almost. So it's Elisa. Oh, it is. Okay. Thanks. So just a little point of correction. All right. Well, All right. Um, wait a minute. Anna Mary just sent me a text. Where is it? Yeah, she said, unable to join. Are others on? I responded, yes. She's unable to join because she was just asking if others were on. So I said yes. It says the meeting is invalid. Tell her, tell her to go up. Tell her not to type in that. Well, you know what I'll do is I'll tell her don't type the blue. Just go off of the. You can go off the agenda on the website. Yeah. Put the agenda. Oh, but not the blue thing. Go on the one above it. Yeah, the one. Yeah, above it. Well, well, that's blue. my was my confusion. The one that doesn't look like a link. Okay. Um, the January 31st minutes. Oh, wasn't that the 31st? No, that was the 9th. That was the 9th. Right. Then January 9th, I might, I'll abstain because I must not have been here because it doesn't say I was present. You weren't present. You were yeah. here and I'll there. I'll abstain. Okay. And then the, the 31st, I make a motion to approve the minutes. You have a second? I'll second. Marsha seconds. All in favor? Chris Berglund, aye. Marsha, aye. Chris Rucho, aye. Mark? Oh, I, yes. Mark, I help help I. And Bob, I. Okay. Thank God we put those to bed. Thank you so much, Bob, for doing this. It's a monumental job. Um, another example of short staffing. <laughs> um, Going forward, uh, are there any updates from the boards that we should know about to put our conversation in context? Um, David Femia has joined us as a guest. What would you, David, is there anything? The only thing I have is the, uh, I got an email from um, MHP about their housing institute that they have in, in, Ju in June. It's, it's gonna be this year live. Uh, in person at uh, Devon's on the 14th and 15th of June. And uh, further information will be coming in uh, in May on what's going to, who's going to be there and what topics are going to be available. 
Thank you, David. It's You're welcome. Very faithful about going to these conferences. Um, I think Bob and I were. Uh, is that a Maria? Pat, one other thing. Yes. Okay, I was at the uh, CPTC conference at Holy Cross on March 18th, and um, the Lieutenant Governor was there and a bunch of questions were asked. Well, one of the important questions that has to do with our town, well, actually all municipal municipalities in the Commonwealth is, is that the uh, 2020 census will be coming out in, in May, and DHCD has told me that as soon as that comes out, they will then adjust the SHI. And they're looking at a 25% decrease. So wherever we are now, we may go down. Across the board, you're saying? Yes, across the board. For every community? Some, some, some communities might go up, some communities might say the same, some communities, but they're saying it looks like it's gonna be a downspread 25% over the whole, over the state. Well, it's, it's been a, quite a bit of building. Yes. Let's be honest. Okay. Um, anything else? Twenty five percent, Dave, on on what on, on available housing units? Is that it? A, a decrease in their SHI. Right. Oh, affordable housing units. Yeah. I uh, okay, mean, just thanks. because the populations are increasing without the housing. Is that what you mean? That's that's what it sounds like to me. Anyways, when they, when they were talking about it. Um, they also, the Lieutenant Governor also stated, and I'm not 100% sure, but I thought I was all the way in the back. So, you know, it was kind of hard to hear what she exactly, but she did mention um, that the uh, Governor Healy is going to be um, making a new cabinet in her um, organization. And it's gonna be uh, strictly affordable housing. They have not named anybody that's gonna be in charge of that. But she did say something about that um, because of the land and stuff, they may be able to use some state land for affordable Ooh. housing. So that would, if that's, if that in fact is true, then that would help us, you know, um, because of DCR. The other thing was, is that I did ask about, um, because of the, the 18 Malden Street, because of the amount of units, I asked a question about how many units can a developer build at one time, you know, and they go in stages. And for us, because of them, they take our um, uh, winter, how many year round homes we have. We have 27, 29, so we're over the 2,500. So he can, a developer can come in and build no more than 200 at one project. So the Malden Street is basically, you know, so just thought I, you know, I did ask the question because I wasn't sure. What's the limitation? Based? The number of the number of year round units uh, uh, housing that each municipality has. It goes in, in sections. And we, because ours is twenty seven, twenty five, we're over twenty five hundred. So that max is two hundred. So in other words, a developer can't build more than two. If a developer came in and wanted to build 202 units, we could say no. Um, At least that's, where is that Where is that law located? Where is I got, that? It, I got it directly from uh, uh, Phil DiMartino from DHCD. Oh, it's who's in charge of, yeah, so who's in charge. Yes. Sorry, it's another DHCD issuance? Yes. Is it law? Is it been passed by the legislature? That's According to him, like I said, he's he's the uh, authority on SHI, and um, that's what uh, that's what he uh, he told me. So I have no reason to doubt. No, um, I'm, not I'm not doubting it. Uh, it's it points to a factor that we'll bring up later with, um, that Jennifer identified. And okay. that is that DHCD it issues guidelines as if okay. they're regulations. Right, large scale projects, 760 CMR 56.031D, 56.036. The, 
The DZBA has discretion to reject projects exceeding thresholds based on number of units or percentage of total housing units, depending on the size of the community. And then he gives a listing if, and because in the municipality, which has between 2,500 and 5,000 housing units, the two, it's a 200 unit cap. And West Boylston, the, because they're using the 2010, year round housing units is 27, 29. So the cap is 200. Okay. And that's in, that's in the 760 CMR 5603. And what is the CMR? It's not mass general laws. No, but it's another law that it's another law that uh, that uh, DHCD controls. Is it does it apply to 40 B projects? So yes. That, so they have to phase all their 40 B projects. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's worth pursuing the philosophy that we're talking about and the the the, mo the fact that DHCD as an agency is promulgating guidelines. And they think them as regulations, and I'm not sure if they could carry the force of law. I don't know. I'm just raising it. Um, it's, it's just so annoying um, for, for ordinary people, for municipalities to build up support for affordable housing when the rules keep changing all the time and the residents feel um, bamboozled. Do you understand, Bob, what I'm trying to say? Bob, does it, make, does it make any sense? Yeah. Um, I think you're trying to say that when you're trying to get support, but the carpet keeps getting tugged out from under your feet, so it doesn't make any, yeah, you, you can think you're making headway and you've met a requirement and all of a sudden you haven't met that requirement because they changed the rules. And Thank you, Mark. And that's exactly what our complaint is about the glam the 1.5% um, that rule changed and and, and, yep. and made it more onerous for communities. <clears throat> and, um, well, anyway, we'll, let's, let, let me go on. Um, I'm gonna move the agenda item from one agenda forward. And that is the conversation that Jennifer and I had with the um, graduate students at Tufts. Um, we met via Zoom a week ago, Friday last the 24th and um, the young women and well, it was in this case it was young women the graduate students were very forthright very interested turns out there are about 132 communities in the Massachusetts that have affordable housing trusts and of those they've chosen to um, study under the mass housing MHP grant and interest um, 33, and we're one of them. Um, and uh, and so, so they're pleased that we had a very frank, very good discussion. And um, there was a list of questions they sent, and I think I forwarded the questions to you. I hope I did. Um, and part of it is, you know, the obstacles, the challenges, how well do you work within the community, what dynamics are going on. And so we were clearly able to answer in the affirmative about the dynamic within the community that the select board is very supportive. Um, and actually, you know, we have membership on the, the trust that um, the town administrators historically have been very helpful. And um, however, we are a small group of volunteers without a deep bench of staff. And, um, and, and, and Jennifer really needed to hammer that home with these people who are going to be responsible. Um, we outlined, we really forthrightly, you know, hammered home the, um, the challenges facing us and the land constraints, the DCR land and so forth. The, uh, the, the need to respect the wetlands. So if they, they want to sell state land for development, they better re respect the wetlands around the reservoir, you know, so that we continue to be able to um, give Boston its drinking waters. Um, the other issue that is so number two was the need to identify and work with developers who are willing to construct housing at 50% of the AMI, that this has been a persistent problem for us. So we really hammer that home, Mark, 
Um, Good. The, Good. The yeah, third I, I one. The they, third, hope that goes far. Well, we, you know, we're trying to get it in their thinking. We were really yeah. trying to educate these young people about the challenges facing townships. We were, and then the third thing was um, develop um, that we want to work with developers who are willing to create projects that align with our stated goals and objectives as in, and we out named the three documents that we use all the time. And the third thing that um, we, and then the confusion we, that develops when state agencies change the rules. For instance, in the, when we identified the GLAM rules and the 1.5%, and that can, causes confusion in a community and lack of support and so forth. And that, the, that state agencies often issue guidelines that they think are regulations and their guidelines. And that's a great quote from Jennifer. She used, you know, she's really identified that as a, as a problem and states it very well. So they listened. I mean, Lord knows how it's going to come out. The, um, but they, they listened and they were grateful for, because we were very honest. Um, now, you were forwarded surveys. Did you have any time to look at them or fill them out? I have. I don't remember a survey. Whenever you can do it, it'd be great. You know, if um, and if you get those points across somehow, that would be great to underscore that. Um, what was so, it? A link you sent us, Pat? Was that it? Yes. Did you get it? Was it? a link. It was a link way back, like a. It was a while ago, right? I know. It was, it was the same time that you that, that you and uh, Jen said you were going to meet with them. Yes. Just the two of you. Yeah, I did see that email. I just I, I didn't read down when I saw that you just the two of you were meeting. I figured I was off the hook. So I understand completely. I'll see, I'll see if <laughs> I can. Do you have the date on that, Chris? Um, hang on, I'll find it. After this meeting, I will resend it because one of my huge faults that I was going to get over during Lent was that I don't delete anything. And I don't either. <laughs> unfortunately, we are where we are and things have not been deleted. So uh, I, I, I wish that was my worst sin, Pat, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I will get it to you. Um, if you have time, you know, we told them that people are volunteers, you know, it's hard. All right, and the other thing- Pat forwarded, you Pat forwarded on March 17th, St. Patrick's Thank Day. Thank you. Yeah. I think I wished you a happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, well, you probably did, you yeah. You did, yes, you did. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then we're having addressed that issue. Um, we can get back on the- um, Discussion about um, which we really need your input on um, the, the housing production plan. Um, I, I waited to talk. I wanted permission from Jennifer to share the email. And she's been so busy. Oh my lord! I mean, she's so responsive, but so much is going on that I finally got to her yesterday. And she, I forwarded to you. I don't know if you had a chance to look at the um, yeah. Uh, the Courtney, Courtney email? Courtney and also Lynn Sweet. So uh, upon direction from the last meeting, I met with Jen Jennifer and we um, decided to ask, send out a request for thoughts, you know, from Lynn Sweet and COG is no longer doing that. That, that was my first call. Um, and Courtney and Roberta, as you could see from that email, have gone off on their own and are doing very well in community service, um, whatever they call themselves now, consulting, I think. And um, so the prices have gone up for of course. Uh, housing production plans. But what we wanted, we, Jennifer and myself, wanted to emphasize with them is that it's been done. All the historical stuff has been done. We, just, we need update and practical implementation strategies. 
Do we? It sounded like from Courtney's email that she understood that 100. percent And she was she would write her document with the with the tilt towards what we want to get done, not so much to the history. She just used the history that's already in the old document that she did. Yeah. The thought being that such a pro a document with full consultation of the, the select board and the rest um, would give direction and it would be much more practical than just a paper thing that we've been doing in the past. You know, we go, goals, right. implementation, how to do it. And um, so uh, uh, the question comes, how do, we, how do you want to go forward? Um, we certainly want to be under the $50,000 range. Remember, Courtney said, you know, he has to go RFP. Um, so we, I'm looking for your direction. I, I would see what she quotes. I mean, I, I don't think we're going, I don't think you're going the wrong way. I think that's, <laughs> that's the right thing to do. So it's fifty thousand is what we have to do the RFP limit. That's uh, I thought it was less than that, but that's I, I thought it was too. But she, she yeah. Chris, Chris no, about without a bid or something. There was some that level was before you had to have more than one. So yeah. there was some limit that you had but to stay even, under. But even the fact that she said she said in a note that we approached Cog and Cog said no, that would count as a, an approach. Yes, right. You know that we had tried, and right. so that Lynn Sweet, and we have um, Courtney. Um, for those new to, to the the board, um, I th think it's fair to say that everyone really enjoyed working with Courtney and Roberta. Yeah, definitely. I said that I, I sent another email to Jen saying that I said they, we they they did a good job last time. They did a good presentation, things like that. Right. And oh, and I think a, a number of you mentioned the Central Mass Regional Planning Council using them. And um, in conversation. Um, yeah, Vinny wasn't, I, I think uh, Vinny didn't he say that he was, he said they, they took a long time and it was not as organized as. He, right. he may have hoped I mean, that came actually that came to me because I reached out to Mass Housing Partnership mm -hmm. for suggestions, and that's what she suggested was Central Mass Regional Planning. So, um, didn't she didn't offer any funding, but she offered uh, um, <laughs> yeah, as far as I have to, I have to underscore um, Vinny's assessment because we were I was part of that as well, and um, it, it ended up that we had to do so much of the work and. Yeah. When you juxtapose that with the work that Courtney and Roberta did, it was night and day, you know, in terms of um, production. I think How much was, what, what, what did they charge? What did Sorry. Courtney and Roberta, what did Courtney and Roberta charge the last time? Do you remember? You know, I must confess yeah. that I was going to call Leslie and I didn't. Okay. So, All right. Now I'm just curious. But it was less than that because I had a, um, a heart flutter when I saw the um, thirty thousand to forty to fifty thousand. I yeah. think I think probably the complexity has grown and grown and grown. I'm sure. I'm and, sure. It has. Uh, the other thing is that we want to make sure we're part of the 19, the twenty twenty census, so that there's not hurt. I don't think we're you know there's an urgency right now. I I, I just wanted a broad sense of whether we can go forward. We have the funds and therefore I can go in front of this um, Community Preservation Committee, Christopher Rucho, and say, I spent money. Uh, Not laughing, Chris. Uh, I heard you. <laughs> I know he's going to give me such a hard time. <laughs> and he's such a nice man. <laughs> but uh, the um, the uh, but but truly, if if the document gives us what we need, and uh, some armament in terms of future developers and so forth, I, I think um, you know it would be money well spent. Personally, I would would love to hear from you guys what you think. No, oh, absolutely, I, I I would agree, I, and 
you know, there may be a funding source that can, that, that can help with it too. I mean, even if we, again, mm -hmm. check check on that grant. I mean, we you know, put an application in for that grant. I mean, not, nothing says we're going to get it, but I think it's, it's uh, th th worth a try. That, yeah, and this is something that I think we need to have in our quiver. You know, uh, as far as um, just to show that we're doing. What we need, and I, and I believe that we're, you know, Mark, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe we, we've taken all the current steps necessary on this MBTA stuff, right? As far as the zoning efforts. Yeah, I mean, I think we're at the right stage where we can say we're going that way, but no compliant to this point. Yeah. Along. Right. Right. Is it true that Holden is challenging the MBTA ruling? Yeah. I'm yeah. fascinated yeah. by that one. I want to see yeah. how that goes. I mean, I'm, I wonder. I'm, I'm, I, I'm wondering what they're doing about all their 40B stuff. Like, do they just tell poor people when they, they walk have, in that we're not going to do have, it? They don't have sewers. They do. They have sewers. Yeah, I mean, they have sewer. And with land available, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know about well, land available, but there's yeah, there's under, sewage there. But I don't it know. Depends uh, on the part of the town. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Um, it's pretty well, well developed town when you think about it. Um, uh, Newell Street's the only thing I'm thinking of. I know there was some development that was going on down there, and I don't know if that's sewered, Pat, but yeah, but it, yeah, I'm just I'm amazed that they're taking such a firm stand on this. It, to me, it's oh, I want to see how it goes. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Well, all want, right. yeah. so so do you think? Thirty thousand dollars or forty thousand dollars. If we don't get the grant, I'm, I'm going to talk about the grant in a minute. We, we should um, is out of the ballpark, or can we pursue it? Can Jennifer and I look into it and then come back to you for? A I think so. Yeah, I would say why not? I mean, if we don't need to, if we don't need, to, there's no process for a contract of that size. I thought anything over ten grand, you needed three bids or something like that. But, um, well, maybe, you know, maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't know. I mean, we could get two more. We could get a bid, a hard bid from Lynn Sweet, mm -hmm. a hard bid from um, Courtney. My question is, and I could, I was hit upon. Do we have to take the lowest bid? No. No, you don't have to take lowest bid. But you, you have to do due diligence in uh, obtaining the, uh, the the bids. You can look at the the qualifications and make a decision based on that. But you're not constrained to low bid. So when when Jennifer hopefully will be you know writing the request or something. Um, uh, she will have to make sure that she, I guess, identifies what are the key elements that we want. We'll, we'll, we'll be judging, sort of like the rubric we did for the, um, L, you know, the whether we were yeah, going to let the forty B projects. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying. So let me let me talk what, with Jen again. Um, but you're in favor of going forward for sure. If we get two bids from Lynn, one from Lynn and one from Courtney, plus the refusal from COG, that would make three that yeah. we approached, correct? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, and then we could, and then you would evaluate, you know, we would decide yeah. how to do that. that members of the board would. The only, the, the only whatever issue I would bring up is that there's all these 40Bs coming through town right now, like the projects are coming through right this minute. Um, there, I don't know if it's a good idea to wait for some of that to settle out, you know, to see if they see if they're really going to do anything or not, because it's a different document if we've got all these 40 Bs you know, permitted, you know. I mean, that, that's my only comment there. You know, well, we 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 look like we look like heroes. Pat will look like a hero, a heroine, with the, the fact that you know the, the housing production plan said we needed to add this stuff, and then all of a sudden, boom, bingo! Two years later, we, <laughs> we, we, meet, we, we meet the subsidized housing. How many years of right? pushing around? Two thousand seven. I should live so long, Chris. I mean, for God's yeah. sake. 
my expiration. It, it's too, I, I hear what you're saying, Mark. I think it's a two-edged sword there. I don't know. I don't know which one's better. I mean, I know. I, I think what is it? Uh, we have a, November is five years, right? That, that our yeah. plan and, will be. And uh, none of the projects are going to be done by then. You know. Right. Right. So I think we want to, if, if we can, keep that alive because I think that's something that we've. Even though we haven't met them all the metrics that we said we would, but we've made some efforts, and uh, you right. know we, we took, yeah we we said that we'd you know look to expand the um, you know the uh, housing authority that didn't go anywhere. I mean we we looked to exchange land for you know to exchange housing authority that didn't go anywhere. Um, you know we haven't had great success, but we've also had a lot of limitations and a lot of side steps. And again with the glam and everything that. Was something that right. we thought we were didn't need to be as aggressive with so hopefully we can articulate that and or, or a consultant can articulate that in a document that would be important um, but chris yeah. to all your hard work getting the um the idea of the 16 page grant or assistance in the technical assistance i don't think we have the horses to put together a 16 page grant I mean, I know Marsha was saying before the meeting we could all sit down and work together, but this this it's a lot of data analysis and that information. And you know, those guidelines are written for communities like Newton and what have you. Yeah. There, there's a yeah, there, there's a lot in there. You know, maybe we could, you know, take a look at it. I mean, again, it, it, technically it doesn't open up until May. I mean, but it's a short window too, because you have to file it by June. And uh, and you have to have your uh, um, your bid done by that uh, and so forth. But you know we can work with them. I and mean, I think there's this this is kind of a an open period where they will consult with you. This is what they're supposed to do. I think this is a whole new platform that they're using. So we'll we'll, we'll see exactly how it goes. They have. I think they started it last year. Um, I didn't I didn't get a lot of uh face to face but i did get a couple of emails and, and just some guidance there from the their site so i you know I'm, i i can look at it i know there's a lot of zoning stuff in there that's going to come into play i know there's a lot of 40r 40b you know all these sort of stuff that you know, questions about that so it would be a multifaceted project it would take more than one person oh absolutely uh, certainly certainly to do I um i imagine that you have to it, it must be designed somewhat to use things that are already done. They couldn't want you to develop new, new drawings or new plans. Just oh no no no, no 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 you no, just no, have no, to no, look no. up all the things and and gather and the information the for part. for the um for the form. Mm -hmm. Right, right, and 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 I don't think you know as much as it. I don't know. Um, let me just see what they had. Chris, you're interested in pursuing this. Anyone else on the, com the com committee here? Marsha wants to help out, right? Absolutely. Um, Bob, I've done a few grants. Bob, can you, do you have time? I can look at it. Yeah, I'll look at it. Yeah. And then you, in the select board and the, um, I mean, I'll, I'll certainly board, we'll, we, we consulted in the zoning questions or something. We, why, why don't we, as a demonstration of good faith, look into it, um, Chris. I think that's just to be good stewards to see if we yeah, can get. Yeah, that's fine. But point out if you in your conversations how we are a tiny town, and right. we don't have a planner, and we don't have right. enough money to pay our fire department what they need. You know, we we. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Um, I, that's what when I when I put together the expression of interest, which was a shorter application. That was, I think, only three pages. Um, but that was the sort of stuff that they they asked, you know. And I said, you know, the reason we're looking for this, this, you know, some subsidi uh, subsidization on this is because we don't have a full time planner, we don't have any planner in our uh, town, and uh, we're doing this through a board, and you know, we have to outsource a good portion of it. So when it comes to housing production, we don't have that expertise. So, so at least no. they said it would qualify. So, <laughs> whether we get it or not. is Susan Connolly at MHP now, guys? Do you remember? No, she's not. She oh, has she's moved not. on. She's she moved on. Been. Okay. Thank you, David. So You're she, welcome. He, he, she would have been a contact, right? Um, okay. Thank you, Chris and yeah. Mark and Bob for willing to do this. Um, I think it's important. So going forward, um, I will 
get hard um, proposals from both Lynn Sweet and um, uh, Courtney and Roberta, okay? And then we'll come back and we'll decide if we, or what we will, will do, okay? But I wanted to, I, I was so shocked at the numbers. I didn't want to go forward yeah. without consulting with you that things have cost more. more. Well, no, what's the alternative? I think we should definitely get other quotes. And yeah. I don't know, but I think if if the quotes are apples to apples and everybody's doing the same thing, I think we might have to go with the low bidder. Oh, really? I think if all else is equal and they're both they're all doing the same thing, I think it's a hard thing not to go with the low bidder. I get you. So is there any way to structure it so that um we don't have, you know, we say up front. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I know. I think we have to tell them exactly what we want and they have to bid on exactly what we want. Okay. Um, but, then, I, but you can evaluate they, every proposal based on your criteria to make sure they all meet the criteria you put out in your, 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 uh, you, request. If, if you had one that you, if you had one that you wanted, can you tell them the, you know, can you share with them that they have to be lower? You don't tell them the amount, but let well, them rebid, come back again. Well, you know, my father always says you get what you pay for. And, um, I don't think they're going to be much different. You, I think they're going to be close. I mean, they could all answer the question, and one answer could be really well done, and the other one not so well done, and the not so well done is cheaper. That's just makes no sense to me. Well, but that's so, the law. Okay, so, so to the to the point about Vinny's point from before is that CMRPC when they did it before, I think it was this document, they were sort of using their cookie cutter because they were doing the same document for like five towns at once. So they yeah. kind of just took that same document and doctored it up for the different statistics for your town. Um, and that's, I think, why there was a problem is because the other towns wanted family housing or something, whatever it was, you know, they had a different motivation. And they just sort of ironed that into our document. And that's why it had to be all uh, rewritten. So I think that you're going to have to be careful if CMRPC were to bid and it was remarkably lower, you have to sort of be able to ask a question like, is this like, why, whatever, what, what, why is yours lower somehow? And they can say, oh, because we're doing it for five towns at once or whatever their reason is, but, you know, make it so that you have a reason to say, well, these people have been working with us for a long time. They know we know what we're going to get from them. These people over here, you know, are much cheaper because they're sort of giving us a cookie cutter document that maybe checks the boxes for the state, but it doesn't say what we want, doesn't say what we wanted to say. You know, you know, Chris, um, you wonder uh, about cutting and pasting and all of that, you know, and how you evaluate. Yeah, that. I mean, you, you guys on the select board. Don't you have to evaluate um, contracts like that? If if I, I and again, that's why I think if everything's apples to apples, you have to go with the low bidder. Got it. I mean, if obviously if someone's not doing something that we asked them to do, yeah, I would think you don't have to go with the low bidder. Okay. But, or I mean, if if that's the case, why do you get three bids if you can pick the highest bid? That's a good point. Yeah. Well, because you're evaluating the proposal. Right. No, it's it's. I think if the reason why you're getting three bids, if everybody's bidding the same thing, I think you have to go at the low bidder because that takes out the, I want to give the job to a friend. Ah, so that's the worry. So I think you should you talk, to, talk to talk to the town administrator, talk to Jen, and let her. She's yeah. she's yeah. the expert on this. You're and right. then, and I'm, I'm looking at Courtney's email to Jen for procurement. You're looking at a service between 10 and 50 K at least from us. So 30 B, which is the mass general law requires that you ask for quotes from three parties and the award goes to the lowest quote for the needed quality of the, of the supply or service from a responsible bidder. How do you evaluate the quality? Well, it's it's based on your your uh, request for qualifications. Yeah. You you put it in there. 
you can look at their experience and you can check their references. References, right, Bob. Yeah. You, yeah. you go back and you look. It, it's with a it's not like you've been on sinks. It, it's it's you have to look at their professional qualifications and the work they've done in the past. Okay. You know, it's not like it's not like it's it um, you know, like the maintenance supplies. It's it, uh, and uh, to, to that I think Chris is right that you've got to go through with the town administrator. She's your pro, right. uh, procurement so, officer. I was wondering if you could ask for a redacted copy of a a, a, a you know a, a document they created. You know, to get a sample of what they've done. Seems to me. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I will. Well, I, I mean, you just ask them, we can ask them what towns they've done it with, and we can look at that, right? right? Cause... Be on the website. That's right. Yeah, should be on the website. Well, who knows? All right. Um, Good look at that. You all are great. Is, is there anything else that we need to discuss? Um, hey, Pat. Yes. One of the things when you were talking about uh, Susan Connolly, uh, a good contact point for MHP would be Laura Schufelt. Laura Schufelt. Okay, that's for you, Chris. Laura Schufelt. Okay, I don't know her. Don't she's the director of community assistance at MHP. I believe she's the one that took um, uh, Susan Connolly's uh, position when Susan left. If you want her phone number, I have her phone number. Yeah, why don't you give it to me? That would be good. It's it's eight five seven. Hang on a sec. Let me let me put it in my notes here, so I'll have it in a spot that I'll know. I'll, I know that I will be able to retrieve it. All right, Dave F. And what's her name? Lori. La Lara. L a u r a. And her last yep. name is Schufelt. S h u f e l t. Okay, and number? Her phone number is, one second. Uh, let me see where the heck is her phone number. I just lost it. I'll have to email it to you. you can email it. Oh, here it is, 857-317-8584. Yep. Yep. 857-317-8584. Eight five eight two. Yep. Great. Thanks, Dave. You are eight, eight two. Okay. So we need to reschedule. What, what's a good time to reschedule? Um, you, excuse me, Pat. Yes. You were going to do the LDS report. Oh, um, what I was. Thank you for what we were going to do is I'm going to talk to Lynn about waiting to finish it until the, the 2020. Okay. Because it's a waste of time, you know. What I mean, we need the twenty twenty. Um, okay. Don't Census. you think that makes sense? Mm -hmm. You know, she's working with the SHI. It's foolish to have a. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Is her is her report over a certain period? Right, but uh, my thought was to, to have her extended to make it worthwhile. Oh, okay. You know, you know what I'm saying? Otherwise, we're going to have just another file. The SHI. I didn't know if it was like the last year's eight, report kind of thing. And David said bad news is coming down, so we need to know. All right, um, gentlemen. Do we want to? Do we want to? Uh, so uh, I, I don't know who's willing to take a look at this application. I mean, we we can. Maybe the next week or two, just kind of go through it and just see what we think is. I think it's Bob and Marsha and yeah. Bob, Marsha, okay. Is this for the grant? Yeah. yeah. This is, yeah, the grant applicant. Yeah, just to see if we have any uh, change. Well, we have chance. a person in town that can help with grants too. I don't know if that would help. Okay. Um, we well, maybe what we can maybe Bob and Marsh, I can reach out to you. We can just uh, try to tap Jen for some guidance on that. Absolutely. And see how that goes, because the way we have to do it is we have to do it through a portal. So yeah. it's uh, one of these things where you need to, it's got to be the, all the town information's in there and everything. So. Um, so maybe uh, 
I don't know next. Uh, I don't know if there's a good day next week. For anybody. Um, let me get my calendar. My phone's on charge. Okay. Hold on. Chris. Yeah. Chris Rucho. Oh. Yes. Chris Rucho, is that a rotary phone behind you? Yes. Yeah. I don't have a touchstone yet. Okay, good. I'm still a little behind. Are you serious? No. <laughs> I it hope is. not. It's next to my typewriter. Yeah. Oh, that's adorable. Geez, I've got a rotary phone down here too, Chris, in my basement. <laughs> I do too in my sewing room. <laughs> Wow. Oh, that's so, wonderful. That's so great. the bottom the bottom line is none of us will be lining up on Antiques Roadshow with that, I can tell you. That's true. Yeah. All right. Next week, Chris. Yeah. Um, let me see. The only the only thing I have, let me see. No, this is why don't you got you guys want to work offline on that and then we can yeah. Why not? Yeah, uh, maybe we can an email the three of you can pick a date that works. Okay, so Bob. Yeah. Okay. Bob, Marcia, Monday afternoon. Me, right? Monday afternoon, I'm busy, and Tuesday, um, uh, most of the day, but the other three days, I'm open. Okay, Tuesday, most of the day. I think I'm out. All right. I'll. You know what I'll do is I'll. I'll. Let's just do it through email. What I'll do is I'll just email you guys with some available times, and then okay. we'll try to. Because I think it's best if we sit down. We could probably try to do a Zoom and share screens and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Schedule. Thank you guys so much. Scheduling the next meeting. Um, we probably want Jennifer to be able to tune in to our meetings sometimes. And if she's taking this class on Tuesday nights, that's going to rule that out. Um, what is what is your sense of a, another date? Um, do, did we talk about Thursdays? Like Thursday the 18th, would that work? Thursday yeah. works for me. Thursday's the, the 18th of Tuesday. May. Oh, May. <laughs> well, we have a, a uh, housing authority meeting, but that's at 4.30, so. Uh, 4.30, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, so that's that, not bad. That jams you, doesn't it? Uh, but we'll be out of there by five, five thirty. What about Wednesday? I mean, March, that's, March. Yeah. Wednesday. I can't do that. I can't do that Wednesday. I've got a, I got okay. another. I got a diocese meeting. What's yeah. wrong with the Thursday? There's nothing. She said Thursday she could be there. Six o'clock. Um, do you want to do it in person or do you want to Zoom? Fine. Six o'clock is fine on Thursday the eighteenth. Yes. Okay. Sure. Would you? Are we going to do it in person? Well, you got to reach out to Jen too and make sure she can, if you want her there. Yeah. Why don't we, we try a Zoom again? We, we we do pretty well on Zoom, don't you think? I hate no. Zoom. I know, but that it's fine. It, it, we're not <laughs> we're not looking at maps right now or anything, you know. And, and Chris. Rucho can screen save for us at a drop of a hat. So, um, right. you, Chris, so we'll what do you go on the 18th at six o'clock if it's all right with Jen? Zoom. Yeah, so. And I will, I will check with Jen in the morning to make sure that is a good date for her. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. So Sounds got good. A, um, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All right, all, all right. in favor, indicate by your Aye. 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 Masha, aye. Aye. Mark, Chris. Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you for coming, David. Um, take care, everyone, and stay well. You